How do you do? We are about to unfold the story of the son of Frankenstein. This one is probably just as bad as his father. Good morning, sir. Well, hello. My son, you have inherited the fortune of the Frankensteins. I trust you will not inherit their fate. By heaven, I think you're a worse fiend than your father. What are you going to do about it? There's a monster of what you know it. Well, we warned you. You've been warned. Welcome back to Frankenstein Minute, the podcast that dissects the Universal Frankenstein film series minute by minute. I'm Bill Evenson. And I'm Tom Lang, and you join us for join us for minute three of Son of Frankenstein from 1939. Oh, we should talk about the shirt. Sure. Uh, one of our one of our fans, uh, Mike Herman, sent us these lovely Son of Frankenstein shirts. Yep, uh, and we're both wearing them. Yep. Uh, I didn't put mine on yet. I just gave it I, to yeah, you. I just got it. It's but great. thank you for doing that. Yeah, no, that was great. Uh, the previous minute, uh, we were introduced to a gentleman that we spoke about briefly, but we will go into a little bit more depth. It's the return of the guy that Fritz cut down from the gallows back it in is. season one. That's right, back in like minute seven of Frankenstein or yeah, something I guess like so. that. Huh. Uh, it is Bela Ferenc. I've never been able to figure out how to pronounce these properly. Ferenc de so Blasco. Blasco seems like it's right. Blasco is right. The rest, I'm sure I butchered. <laughs> Probably Blasco, actually. Yeah, since it's Hungarian. Born October. October 20th, 1882, in Lugos, Hungary, hmm. who we're talking about is Bela Lugosi. Ah, Lugos. Lugos. I guess I didn't know that. Uh, he died August 16th, 1956, in Los Angeles, at the age of 73. Early in his and career. They, and they and that wasn't his, he still appeared in films after that. He did, yeah. I don't know. I was going to try to make some joke that they kept filming while he was dead, but I don't think <laughs> well, that they, really they might have, you know, Could the last, be. They, it's very possible, <laughs> considering who made the last few films he was in. I uh, worked under the name. Aristid Olt or Olt Aristid <laughs> uh, early on in his film career. Either works. Either way, <laughs> you know, I don't know. I worked by Lang Tom for a while, too. Is that right? Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Obviously a horror icon. We've mentioned him almost every episode he comes up. Yeah, at some point, whether he's involved with it or not. And he's been, finally in the and movie. he's finally in the fucking movie. Yeah. Uh, he oh, was he's seen briefly at the beginning. big moment for us. He's seen briefly at the beginning of the film last minute, but since we had uh, our uh, special guest, we didn't really get into him a whole lot. Okay, I uh, don't remember. I think we we might have, for all I know. Well, we did touch on it, but I'm not, sure we had to, but not in the depth that I tend to dive. So. <laughs> okay, here we go. Uh, like this. Yeah, 114 film credits from 1917 to 1957. Not bad. Yeah, no, that's pretty good. Not um, bad for somebody who well, whose were, career is considered a bit of a bit of mixed a, bag. Yeah, yeah. There was a number of years where he didn't work. So, right. Uh, some of interest are the Thirteenth Chair from 1929, Todd Brown. Browning directed that, and it's better, and he's better than Dracula. Okay. <laughs> All right, I'll have it, to take a look. Yeah, I've I've got it. If you want to borrow it, I, okay. I hunted it. Down. I don't know if it's commercially available, but I hunted down a uh, bootleg somewhere. And, okay, uh, you could probably find it just as easily. He's in the Hungarian version of King of Jazz, early Technicolor talkie, something called Dracula. Mm. You've seen it? We're going to go mm, see it on it's, Monday. It's um, oh, I can't think of the guy's name. Never mind. You're going to go see it for the first time. It's on not Monday. the one with Frank the Langella. Fra- Le- Le- v- Villa Carlos Carlos Villa Villa or else. That guy. 50 million Frenchmen, which answers a question <laughs> Groucho asks in uh, Monkey Business. Okay, what's the question? How many Frenchmen can't be wrong? Okay. The, the phrase is, well, 50 million Frenchmen can't, can't be, be wrong. wrong. Yeah. Okay. Which I never got when I was a kid watching Monkey sure, Business and I suppose. diving deep into the Marx Brothers. I just thought it was uh, an absurd thing to ask. Right, right. And then you know, I was slightly disappointed to find that there was really an answer for yeah. it. <laughs> 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 so that's all he says. Is he just says how, how many, many how Frenchmen many French can't be yeah, wrong and they move he's on? Cornered by uh, Alky Briggs, the gangster, he's caught in the bedroom with his wife. So of course, Groucho then just harangues him endlessly. Okay, I'll ask I'm you an brilliant. easy one: How many Frenchmen can't be wrong? Okay, Black Camel was an early Charlie Chan, one of the f- oh. few early Warner Olin Charlie Chans that still survive. I think the first four or five. There's a number of them that are missing. Okay, something called Murders in the Room Morgue. Mm-mm. No, White Zombie. Oh yeah. That's a yes. So Actually, <laughs> I like Murders in the Room more, too. It's funny that when we talk about it, we talk about it almost exclusively in a negative way. There's some really great stuff. In there Murders is some really good morgue. stuff. And even Lugosi's not as bad as he is in some stuff. He's pretty bad. <laughs> He's pretty bad. 
Your blood is rotten. That whole scene well, I like with that, Arlene though. Francis. He is so off the charts. It's yeah, that's what it ne- is needed there. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's not, not good acting. Okay. Chandu the Magician. He plays Roxor. Here we go. We'll continue. R-O-C-K space R- S-O-R-E. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly right. Wow. <laughs> uh, okay. Island of the Lost Souls. Oh, you're go- I thought you were moving. All no, right, my God, we got a long way to go. He's great in that. He is good in that for what it is. It's, it's Again, he's over the it's top. A, it's what it's called for. It's a, that movie, everything is over the top. It fits. Uh, How many bands used quotes from his? <laughs> oh, his, good heavens. Uh, is the, Are we not men? The Devo, right? Yeah, uh, and I know, it's, I know it's been in a few heavy metal things. and. Oh. What's the other one? I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> he supposedly balked at the makeup for Frankenstein, yet according to Weaver and the Brunei, here he appears under what they call artless clumps of hair. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> and, yeah, I think his makeup is exceptionally bad in Island of the Lost Soul. Oh, in that one. I thought you meant in this movie we're watching. Okay, yes. I agree. I yeah, think that looks doesn't look awful. good. He looks it doesn't awful. Look good. Everybody else's makeup looks great. Yeah, true. Yeah. And he, here he is. He's got a sports shirt on and, and a face full of hair. <laughs> yeah. It's like they put spirit gum on his face, had him stand in front of a fan and threw hair at him. Yeah. That's not Is good. Is it Pierce? No, that's, that was at that's Paramount. That's the problem, okay. Yeah. Uh, Whispering Shadow, an early uh, serial. Mm-hmm. Night of Terror, which I, it sounds good. I don't know anything else about it. <laughs> the name? <laughs> yeah, okay. the name sounds the name good. good, yeah. Little thing called the Black Cat. Yep. Another little thing called the Gift of Gab, which is like the second quote collaboration between Karloff and Lugosi. And yeah, yeah they're in the same collaboration s- is used loosely. I, I think. don't think they ever. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I don't think they, I think collaborate. they collaborate there. Well, maybe a little bit, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, I guess it's tough to say. You're gonna s- mention some other ones, but I don't want to breeze past the Black Cat or Gift of Gab. Gift of Gab. Case. I mean, come because on. Because it is a it is part of that sort of sacred, holy, small group of films that they the two gentlemen appear together eight of them i believe is what and that's including gift of gab gift and, of gab and, and uh, uh, you'll find out and uh, yeah. a few <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, so this is uh, this is not the first time these two uh, guys have worked together, but we can't talk no. about the other guy yet because he hasn't showed he hasn't up. Shown up. Yeah, yeah, we got a ways to go. It's not Rathbone. No, Gift of Gab. They are in a skit that is being put on at like a radio station, which makes absolutely no sense because it's, a lot of the gags are visual. <laughs> it's one of the handful of films that Carl Freund directed, hmm. and it is not good. Hmm. Lugosi literally is like in a closet. He has a line, and that's it. And then Karloff like has got this Caligari like makeup on he comes creeping in the window yeah. he's in it a little more okay they don't share a shot or anything yep. so it's uh, to call it a collaboration is uh, yeah, it's a little much stretching it uh, Return of Chandu where he actually plays Chandu right right uh, which is referenced in Ed Wood okay uh, it's also the film debut of Gloria Holden Dracula's daughter herself wow I gotta watch that one you should really is it no, good it's no all right. terrible it's alright no. no it's alright okay. I've only seen Lugosi and uh, what was the woman's name again Gloria Holden Gloria Holden in one picture together picture together like a from still photo from yeah, the publicity set. still publicity still uh mark of the vampire yep, i know it you know that one uh the raven you know that one i know that one that's the one that uh i got into a, a bitter argument on twitter about how terrible it is and then the next time <laughs> i watched it i'm like oh it's not that bad it's, so it's, i go back and forth on the raven yeah it's that's no, all right some people love it i know some a lot of lugosi, lugosi people love amazing. it because he's just completely unfettered they just let him go yes that and he's sort of the he's a pompous self self-obsessed prick so he plays that Play, well playing himself is what you're saying <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Maybe at that time. I've heard. I've heard that. Well, it uh, does seem like that, especially in this time period yeah. before he is taken down a peg. Yeah. But the thing about him is, I think sort of the story of Bela Lugosi is that he didn't realize when he had been taken down a peg. So his right. peg was already down. You know, yeah. When, yeah. But when he accepted the role of Dracula, he is, his peg his was peg already, was already lower. pretty much down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> David Manners earned like ten times the amount that he did <laughs> for Dracula. That right. Yeah. Well, yeah. Then he goes on and does uh, White Zombie. For for 25 cents yeah, you know he just yeah. immediately yeah doing he, whatever he let it let it be known he'd work for cheap yeah he let them know he would do dracula pretty much for free is it the raven where he gets more or less equal billing with karloff he's just lugosi no which one's that i, I don't think that ever happened oh i thought there was one where he was just lugosi uh murder by television which i've i've never seen uh the invisible ray comes yep, up again where he plays he ray does, he doesn't play ray <laughs> no, I uh, we already accused that, that one 
Postal Inspector. I liked you? him in Invisible Ray, by the way. He is good. In, he's very good. In I think Invisible he's really Ray. good in Invisible yeah, Ray, he's, he's and he sub- plays that stiff character. He's subdued, and he's like he, if I described everything that happens in that movie, you'd go, "Well, Lugosi would be terrible at that." Right. And he isn't. It, he's great. You know, he's actually really good at yeah. it. It's, again, it's more of a characterish part that yeah. he does really well. Uh, Postal Inspector, one of your favorites. <laughs> <Is> you, <laughs> you have it still, right? It's still up here in the piece. Never seen it. I don't have it. There it is. It's in uh, it? Universal Horrors. No. Yep. Phantom Creeps comes up again. We've talked about it a number of times yeah the gorilla dino talked about how uh he would show (laughs) show his daughter these horror films and she'd be fine he showed her the uh, gorilla and she was terrified of the ritz brothers yes can't say i blame her human monster human monster well who comes up with these they ran out of titles they ran out at monogram or wherever that was nanachka yeah is any good he's really good in that and again it's another character part he's really good i might have seen that actually uh black friday in which nobody is good except that stanley bridge what's his name the the plays the main part that karloff should have played there's a whole big deal about they shifted characters and lugosi got the short straw and he plays this gangster that he's not equipped to play and blah 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 blah. even though he had been hypnotized to do it better <laughs> apparently is there's like footage of yeah, that right yeah him, well, it's when he's locked in the closet there's so at some point you'd go to a movie theater and you might see before the movie there was like a, pr- a news, preview news of, reel or a preview like a news more like a news reel about an upcoming he, movie yeah where he's been hypnotized so he can play so he could pretend like he's locked in a closet <laughs> <laughs> yep. I, I, I have nothing to say. Could be. Devil Bat. It's actually one of those halfway decent Poverty Row films at Monogram and PRC where he was sort of better to uh, rule in hell than serve in heaven, apparently. Yeah. And and is Dwight Fry in that? Uh, no, you're thinking, of, thinking vamp- of the other Vampire one? Bat with oh, okay. Atwill and Fay Ray and Melvin Douglas and okay. most of the sets from the old Dark House. Invisible Ghost, which is actually pretty good. The Black Cat from 1941. Yeah, no, no relation. Uh, again, he's, he's, he's wasted. Yeah. Yeah, he's his bit part as this gardener, but he's really good. When you good. say he's wasted, do you mean he's re- he's fucked up on morphine or? Uh, no, that's not not yet. Not yet. We okay. got, got a few to go through before we get there. Yeah. No, but he's 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 not utilized well. Okay. But he's really good as sort of this befuddled uh, gardener. And sort of one of those where he's a sort of a, a shaggy character part, like Igor, and he's great. Okay. Books run wild with the Bowery Boys. The Wolfman, again, he's great. Yeah. Another character role there. Yep. Black Dragons, uh, the director. That is a good one for him in, in The Wolfman, because you're, you, the, what the, what's called for is for someone to express the horror of what's happening here. Right. And if you kept that up for 90 minutes, it would get a little over the top. <laughs> Yeah. Ghost of Frankenstein, the direct sequel to this film. Mm. Corpse Vanishes, which is an Ed Wood film before Ed Wood started making films. <laughs> it's just that bad, or he's in it? It's just got that loopy, kind of Bride of the Monster sort of logic to it, and it's a lot of fun. Okay. They did, it was an early Mystery Science Theater. It's I a lot of But it's a lot of fun on time. its own. We showed it on Horror Incorporated and had a lot of fun with it. Uh, Night Monster plays a butler again. Bowery at Midnight, mm. which unfortunately does not have the Bowery boys in it, because it might have helped. Sorry, Bowery fans. But it... Uh, uh, he plays sort of a dual role, but not really. Okay. The Ape Man yep. for the Kinks is in the video for that. <laughs> That's him? <laughs> yeah. He's yeah. the guy in the Ape suit. That would be yeah, fantastic. Yeah, well, that would be outstanding, yes. Uh, <laughs> of Frank course, is, he'd been dead for 15 years at that point, <laughs> yeah. or 12, anyway. Frankenstein meets the Wolfman. Nope, another lot, low point. A lot about that. Ghost Sutherland. Yeah, you know, not to ruin things for three years from now when we get started on that, three and a half, but yeah. uh, uh, he's not the he's not good in that. That's, that's, that's the way to say that. There's nothing good about him in that. No. Even when you see that clip of him coming to life on the table, so they'll, they'll insert that yeah, clip sometimes yeah, yeah. Uh, even that it's like don't do that yeah. don't use that there's no, tons uh, of these clips don't yeah, use that yeah, one yeah don't use that one Ghosts on the Loose Bowery Boys uh, Return of the Vampire which is sort of a uh, universal monster mash made for Columbia okay yeah yeah <laughs> yeah. Uh, Voodoo Man which nobody comes off looking good in that Return of the Ape Man yeah which is nothing to do with the original Ape Man no, nothing to do with the kinks nothing to do with the kinks either unfortunately uh, One Body Too Many which is kind of a fun Poverty Row thing okay. uh, The Body Snatcher which I think he's excellent in. He is excellent. He is in that. really, really good in that. It's this this guy who's way out of his element. Right. He's uh, 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 in over his head, out yeah. of his league. Yeah. yeah. You're out of your element, Donnie. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> he's really good. And the scene where where, where Karloff. Well, I'm, I, I'm yeah. Do we spoil? Spoil it. Zombies on Broadway. Genius at work. My Scared goodness. to death, which is filmed in color. Only if your idea of color is everything is orange and green. <laughs> 
Is that two well, strip? Well, as it happens, that is my idea is of color. Is that your idea so. of color? All right. His last major studio film in 1948, Frankenstein meets the... Uh, Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein, sorry. Okay. <laughs> <I was gonna laughs> then say, there's nothing. Bud which, Abbott, Lou Costello meet Frankenstein. All right, yeah, I'm sorry. I got it wrong. After that, 48 to 52, there's nothing. Really? He did a little TV, like a Red Skelton show, which apparently was disastrous. It's referenced in Ed Wood. Yeah. Uh, then he went to England and did Vampire Over London, a.k.a. Mother Riley meets the vampire aka my son the vampire aka carry on vampire aka the vampire and the robot carry aka the vampire. robot and the vampire under any of those titles is it any good <laughs> it is the yeah. last of the old mother riley series which mm. uh, was uh, a fellow named arthur lunkin played this character of old mother riley and apparently quite popular for quite some time uh, number one i didn't grow up in england in the 30s and 40s okay. so this is good to know lost on me i yep. have no I, i've seen it in two or three different forms two it's or three almost di- three different titles yeah <laughs> in different edits and it's not funny in any of them i don't understand uh, the attraction here i like carry on vampire that's trying <laughs> yeah, to well, just yeah, trying to pretend it's like it was, well just yeah <laughs> you put carry it's like on. if we called our made a movie and just called it star wars why not <laughs> fuck it yeah, see what right? happens yeah <laughs> Well, you do carry on Star Wars. Carry on right? Star Wars. See, we got yeah. it. Bella Lugosi meets a Brooklyn gorilla. Yep, he sure does. Which I wish I liked more than I did, just yeah. because it is what it is. Glenn or Glenda? That's F- first pull the strings. Pull the strings. First, basically, the 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 Lugosi role in that is um, better done. Like it's an Academy Award winning performance from Martin for Landau. Martin Landau. <laughs> Dead wood, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Oh yeah, Martin Landau was better as Bella Lugosi. Yeah, than Bella Lugosi was as Bella Lugosi. Well, in yeah. that one, in yeah. that particular instance, yeah. Bride of the Monster, another, which is a classic. Uh, the Black Sleep, another sort fantastic of the last movie. That's a great movie. It was one of the last uh, you know major films that he was in. He walks around in it. Yeah, he six lines. Um, Apparently, there, there's there's various rumors about you know why he doesn't he have dialogue. According to the director, he just couldn't do it. Oh, he has no dialogue in that. One? No the dialogue. Fuck? He, just, a couple no, lines. he okay. just stands there, kind of with his mouth agape. And so, there are shots where he looks like he has no idea what is happening around. Him. <laughs> and Lon Chaney Jr. is a maniac. Yeah. And uh, Tor Johnson name? is in it. And Tor Ra- Johnson. Rathbone. Is in it. Uh, Rathbone's great in it. Rathbone maybe. is better in that than he is in Son of Frankenstein. Oh, here we go. And then there's. And Carradine. Carradine, who's over the top. <laughs> who's he's a Carradine. mess. Carradine. He's, he's, he's a great Car- Carradine at his most Carradine-esque, and he's <laughs> great. Then the very le- next film after The Black Sleep is The Immortal Plan 9 from Outer Space, which is mm. a film I love dearly. You do. I do. I cherish every moment of it. I It could be twice as long, and I would still love it. Okay. Maybe I don't get the Ed Wood thing as much as some people like think. But then again, I just expressed my love for Bride of the Monster, so what are you going to do? There you go. Ro- uh, he's no Roland V. Lee. Oh, he is not. That's for sure. Okay. So that's what I have on... Uh, minute two. That's for minute two. That was for minute two. So now we can start with minute three. And, and minute three starts with Michael Palin and Terry Jones pulling, pulling a cart, cart of filth up a hill. Uh, it's actually a cart of sticks. I see that. It's a big bunch of sticks. It was a good, good, good stick crop in 1938 <laughs> in the village of Frankenstein, apparently. It's the village of what? Frankenstein. That's the name of the town? Yeah. I don't know. I, I'm yeah. going to... This is going to be a thing for me. It's assumed, I think, that that's the name, that of, that's the the name of the town. I'm going to have to just see over the course of the next okay. 99 weeks if there's any possible way I can come up with a plausible or even remotely plausible theory Denial that to deny that that's the actual name of the town. It's going to be tough, and I don't think I could do it. I give you like three more episodes <laughs> to prove that it's not. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> All right. I think I've already lost. <laughs> um, it's very dark. It is extremely dark, even on the uh, the really nice looking Blu-ray and the even nicer looking Blu-ray from France that I got. And it's hard to tell. It looks to me like this set was on the back lot. Mm-hmm. The lighting looks like natural light versus really? studio lighting. Okay. Is there a... M- not in this. There's no mat okay. around this. No, one. no, no, no. Right there. No. Okay. No Numerous shots coming up. Yeah. So... Let me just go again back to last week. Sure, why not? You see them come around the corner in minute two. Yeah. And that is a match shot. That is a match shot. Okay, so do you think that's the same? It's the same set. 
Okay. Yes, yeah, just been, so there is a match shot. It's we, been just not in this minute. The last painting. Yeah. Let's just do last week over again. Yeah. Chuck the fuck, Barsky fuck episode that. and let's fucking do it right. This morning I finally got Jackie to sit down and and watch the minutes. I try to do that every time, like just one time through at the least. You know, we, I turn it on. She goes, "Why is it so dark?" And I'm like, yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> Can't argue with you. It's just a dark shot. I don't know why. Yeah, a boy is about to chuck a rock at. Well, first they they hold up their hands to shield themselves from the evil, from the evil of Frankenstein. Of Frankenstein's house. House. Yeah, uh, which I love. I love that. Yeah, the two, um, the two women pulling the cart. Like, there's a lot of artistry here. There's some thought put into. Yeah, Michael Palin Michael and Terry Jones, Jones hold Jones. Them, so their hands <laughs> up. And then here's the question: Are the kids helping to push the cart, or are they hiding behind it to sneak up on the castle? That basically? was my. That's my guess. Okay, They're and that's hiding. what Barsky I think indicated last week. Yeah, I don't remember. We, yeah, he kind of went on and on. Degree, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I, I remember never, everything he said because he I just blathered on and on and on. That's what I'm gonna go back and redo it. This is episode. So two. We'll just, <laughs> yeah, we'll just yeah. Okay, so those kids they they're gonna chuck a rock. They've obviously planned this out then. But then when they get there, they have second thoughts because the other one well, kid. One kid says, "You're not afraid, are you?" It, it, actually, the first word in this movie is "ain't." Ain't you afraid right. of old Igor? Like, no. no. Mm-hmm. And there's mm-hmm. there's a cutaway mm-hmm. to to a Igor. fucking dude in a window. The guy in a window just sort him. of like he's not even looking at <laughs> in their direction. He's just kind of like he's looking at yeah. his phone. Yeah. <laughs> you might be forgetting given for thinking that they get scared because they were going to break the window and then they realize there's someone there. And well, the window's already been broken looks like a couple times or Well, that previously. makes it just a little bit harder, right? It's yeah, just it's, it's just... expert level window yeah, breaking right, when you right. try to you break what's aim left. For that lower left-hand corner where yep. there's still a pane of there's glass. There's some in the upper left, I think, too. Yeah. So that happens. And then... Turns out he is afraid of old Igor. Seems that he, way. He's like, oh, yeah. yeah. I like that. Yeah. I think that's cute. It is a cute little yeah. way Old Igor, no. Whoa, no, Billy. Let's get out of here, <laughs> Scooby. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't think that'll work quite as well without the visual. Without the visual, everybody knows <laughs> yeah, what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. Everybody's seen Scooby-Doo. Um, there's a hard cut to a wide shot of the backlot European village at night. It's raining, and there's a lot of a lot of people milling mm-hmm. around. <laughs> it's true, in the there's rain. A, there's a lot of activity in the rain there on a you know, Tuesday night in the uh, evening. It rains a lot over over there. and uh, uh, Evidently, I mean, it rains they a would lot probably in this be, film, for sure. That's, exactly. They, they probably would be surprised to see how much activity there is out in the snow when it's here 40 in, below in, in, in Minnesota. Minnesota yeah. They had the Super Bowl here a couple of years ago and it was an exceptionally cold time. We uh, And there was a lot of people outside milling around. We left. We got out of town for that. Oh, did you? We okay. went, to, went to California to get it. Well, I mean, they had, you know, da- a bunch of stuff going on downtown. Yeah, I knew that's, people that's that, that volunteered to work and, and stand outside <laughs> to help people, you know, find their way It's easy to get people to around. volunteer for that, but, you know, you need people need help <laughs> fuck them that, that whole Jeez. sports ball thing is just oh, wrong man then we get a lap dissolve into the uh, I assume council chambers okay and it is the most conventional set in the entire film interesting it looks like what it's supposed to be there's nothing odd there's no weird angles or expressionistic character to it at all it could have well, it's lit. this film could have come out of uh, Frankenstein this, this, this set I this mean. set yeah yeah it, it looks like something James Whale could have done it, sure it, it, it doesn't match the architecture it's, it's of shadowy the, and, and oh yeah I, mean, I agree with everything you said but right in the center of the room is a, a um, pot belly it? stove sort of yeah thing? like yeah. a stove like a, and there's a teapot up on, yeah. one, on a shelf and there's a guy warming his hands on yeah, it yeah yeah like it to some extent the character yes so if, if, if you haven't seen the movie you know we should see the movie Felicity I'm sure you can find it but <laughs> I've got you're like making it sound like it's boring she, I got like eight copies if she needs <laughs> yeah, it yeah so. we'll mail it to her it, it's not boring because what you've what, what makes it interesting is this cast of characters there right. like a guy sitting there you know oh not, no no I, I when I say it's the most conventional it's not like it came out of uh you know like a laurel and hardy film or something or a, like or a, a um, blondie movie it's it is definitely out of a frankenstein film yeah yeah it just doesn't have the over the top wonkiness that the rest of the sets do yeah like the last one yeah. well no the last one was outside but the one but, before that with the weird odd angled that match shot we were talking yeah yeah about, yeah yeah, yeah. So there's a, uh, a meeting with the burgo master <laughs> versus the burgermeister <laughs> from before it's okay. actually spelled that way in the credits I burgo see. master yeah i get that's never bothered me that seems like it's just one of the ways I think it's an americanization is what i took it yeah. i mean i still think it's the same thing here's the thing they've recast the burgomaster presumably because they couldn't get ee e. clive or lionel belmore 
Belmore. Clive, well, they could, they could get Lionel Belmore because he has the first line in the scene. You're such a great straight man. Or am I the straight man yes. in this one? Yeah, I don't know. Lionel don't know. Belmore Third is in base. the scene? It's just a bunch of angry old men in a room yelling angry, at each other. Angry, I just angry really old love white it. men, yeah. Yelling at each other. Yeah. But Lionel Mel- Belmore is back, baby. At better never. Is how, he? How, I don't know. How deep? Oh, how deep? How deep do we want to go? Because, I mean, did we, did we talk a lot about him in Frankenstein? I think by that point, we were still early on and we weren't quite as. Uh, I agree. We should go into the some of these. So we're diving. You can never deep. get too much Belmore. They you say know, dive deep into Lionel. Belmore. That was like Bell less. This this is Bell Belmore. May twelfth, eighteen sixty seven, in Wimbledon. Oh yeah, Wimbledon, London. Oh died January thirtieth, nineteen fifty three. At f- Wimbledon, right? I remember this. He passed he pa- out. Right? When yeah, it was, a, it was in all the newsreels. Yeah, it's terrible. Uh, nineteen fifty three in got Woodland. Hit, got hit by a tennis ball. <laughs> <laughs> Woodland Hills, uh, California, and a lot of these actors that we'll talk about have died in Woodland Hills, California. So my guess is there was like a uh, actor's retirement home in Woodland Hills. Oh, okay. Someone I, I, and someone probably knows that. I don't. Yep. Uh, 85 years old when he died. 184 credits from 1914 to 1945. Apparently is unconfirmed as being in Buster Keaton's The Three Ages. Okay. Rogue Song, a lost Laurel and Hardy film. Uh, a little thing called Frankenstein. A Sign of the Cross for Cecil B. DeMille. The Vampire Bat. That's the film you were thinking right. of earlier with Dwight right. Fry. They shot a lot on these same sets. The back lot, the little Europe village, and uh, the good place. The good place. He was a burgermeister in that. <laughs> yeah, he was. Oliver Twist. Jane. And he was resoundingly mocked yes, and yeah. uh, browbeaten. Yes. By by someone called Baron Frankenstein. Yes. More on that later. Jane Ear with Colin Clive. Uh, the 1934 Cleopatra. David Copperfield. Another Laurel and Hardy. My film. goodness, these are some literary classics yeah. that he had uh, nothing to do with. Another Laurel and Hardy. Bonnie Scotland. Okay. He's like a, a blacksmith. Three Musketeers, the directed by Roland V. Lee. Oh my. Mutiny on the Bounty, Topper, one of my favorite films. Oh, what is he in Topper? The Burgermeister. <laughs> <laughs> what else would he be? Adventures of Robin Hood, Service Deluxe for Roland V. Lee. Hunchback of Notre Dame, the uh, Charles Lawton Wait, version. I'm sorry. What year is Adventures of Robin Hood? 39. So that's before this. Uh, you, you'll, you'll, you'll know soon why I'm asking. Well, we'll talk more about that. Tower of London for Lee, hmm. son, son of Monte Cristo for Lee. Hmm. In The Ghost of Frankenstein, where he basically plays the same role that he plays here. All these guys come back in these same parts. Right, yeah, we've talked about that. They die they or die. don't, doesn't yeah. matter. Ma- um, you know, oh my God, I'm going to do a whole season on this. What's it's that? a dream. This whole film? Ghost. The oh, next go- film go- is just is a dream. It's a dream? It's got to be. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make any sense, so yeah, that makes sense. There you go. That makes Look sense. Look forward to that. That makes more sense than the film does. Look right? forward to that in 2023 when we start, <laughs> we start Ghost, Ghost of Frankenstein. If we haven't killed each other before <laughs> Or that. died trying. Or died trying to kill each other. <laughs> the scene starts, <laughs> it, the camera pulls back from the guy warming his hands. And Belmore leaps to his feet shouting, I for one will not. Yeah, I like it. And then here's my problem. I, I'm kind of uh, anticipating the next line, which is from Lawrence Grant. Do you got a whole oh, thing I on him? Oh, I got a whole thing on him too. All right, well, Lawrence Grant Grant says, and according to the subtitles, he says, enough, yep. guard, enough. Yeah, which is not what he says. What does he say? I thought he says, enough talk, enough. Oh, that makes a lot more sense. I played it back a few times. I did too, but I didn't get that out of it. And my problem is I watched it first with the subtitles, so I, my, you, you, I brought you, a bias you've to got it. That, yeah. That's excellent. That's I think you're right, because that is what, now that you say that, that is what I heard before the subtitles came around. I even went so far as to try and figure out, was his name something that sounds like guard? But no, no it's, it's Emil. Emil, Emil, Emil Lang. Lang. What no no relation. Name. But the thing is, uh, I thought maybe he is a guard, because he um, he's no longer the Burgermaster. He used to be, he the, used burgermaster. To be the Burgermaster. <laughs> is that our... Is that our our, um, our theory. I know that you. Your theory is that the Burgomaster in the first film and the second film are different characters. Yes. This has to be another character. Yeah. Uh, the, as, the, as the Burgomaster. Because he's, he's the village po- it's apothecary. It's decades later. Yeah. Yeah. It's his, well, what, he is the village apothecary. Well, okay, but in this, this uh, is twenty some years. You can later. be more than one thing. Like no, I'm a podcaster sh- and I'm a wino. You know yeah, what I mean? You can yeah, be more, than, be one more than one thing. thing. And so I don't want to pigeonhole him. No. He's not just the village apothecary. He's also a guard. But maybe. Maybe he changed his name out of shame because he was uh, Herr Vogel in Frankenstein. He was when Vogel. He was the uh, Burgermeister. You know, Maybe it's he also such been a decades since then, and he looks Basically, great, really. Yeah, he looks like it's only his, been like eight years. Yeah, this could be his brother. 
Shakespeare's brother. <laughs> uh, Lawrence Grant plays the Burgermeister as he will in Ghost of Frankenstein. Born October 30th, 1870 in Bournemouth, England. I know one thing about him and I'm sure you'll bring it up. Okay. Died uh, February 19th, 1952 in Santa, that was it. No, Santa that's Barbara. Not it. Oh, okay. 81 years old, 100 credits from 1915 to 45. We you will... have not mentioned anybody who has done 99 or less films today. Everybody's Every, got at oh, least 100. Oh, that just keeps going. They're, they're all busy guys. Basically, yeah. in this time period, it was as fast to make a movie as you might think it would be to make a movie. Yeah. They just kept chunking them out. Well, they were, Chunking them was, out. That's my phrase. It was the studio system. All yeah, these true. people were under contract, so they were there yeah. seven days a week. Well, actually, or six days a week. Was uh, the Sabbath? Yes, he kept the Sabbath holy. The Shomer, Shomer Shabbat? Shomer fucking Shabbos. <laughs> Shomer fucking Shabbos. Ah, uh, he's uh, in the original Bulldog We Grumman. finally quoted that character and didn't say... Shut the fuck up, Donnie. Shut the fuck up, Donnie. What's the other... Well, we're going to say that a lot this year. Yeah, we will. <laughs> <laughs> it's more that, or less a given. That, We've yeah. already started. Yeah, I, I didn't want to have him on because I was <laughs> so Isn't tempted to say it every say time. He starts to something. say anything. Shut the fuck up. You're we out of your totally, element. This, we totally do that. Vladimir okay, so this Ilyinich. is... Yips. <laughs> 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 All, right. All right. And we're back. Cat Creeps, the missing remake of The Cat and the Canary. Uh, he was Lawyer Crosby. Uh, Speak Easily with Buster Keaton and Jimmy Durante. Oh, yeah, so one of, of the better of the talky MGM, mm. which isn't saying much, mm. mind you. Uh, Mask of Fu Manchu. One of the better. One of the better Karloff. Uh, yeah. By Candlelight. A big, uh, big, um, mm. I'm so bad with names. The guy who does all the special effects for all these. Oh, Doesn't Ken Strickfadden. Yeah, one of the better Strickfadden. Yes, definitely. By Candlelight for James Whale. Hmm. Count of Monte Cristo, which will come up a lot for Roland V. Lee. Man Who Reclaimed His Head, which is the title is way better than the film itself. Uh, Werewolf of London. He's ter- Sir Thomas Forsyth. Yeah, I don't remember him either, but that's... He's not a memorable guy. Tale of Two Cities, which is a story of Minneapolis and St. Paul. So I did see the sequel, Sale of Two Titties, you but did? I haven't seen Tale of Two Cities. Okay. <laughs> Glad you saw that. That was a carry-on film, wasn't it? <laughs> it's from Monty Python. It's Rick, actually, hey, actually, Rick, if you've never heard that joke, that's from... Uh, con- contractual obligation it actually predates that it's oh yeah it predates Monty Cleese, Python I Cleese think. and Marty Feldman did yeah. at, like the, at last the 1948 show I believe oh really uh, he's also in Nunachka with uh, Lugosi I'm not sure that they share a scene though British Intelligence of course Karloff Son of Monte Cristo for Roland V. Lee Jacqueline Hyde from 41 Ghost of Frankenstein where he plays this part again seated in the same seated spot seated in the exact same spot interesting yep so this is fascinating is that it that's all I got so you, you didn't mention the one thing I know about him he hosted the Academy Awards in like 1934 oh I Okay. Well, that's a, a hell of a thing, right? Like, when we were kids, it was Johnny Carson's job. You know, it was yeah. it, it's a thing that when you do that, that's well, it's, now, it's, yeah, it's now a it's great sort of become a joke, but big yeah. deal. Yeah, well, it, a joke, I guess. Yeah, but I mean, but it, but it's a thing that <laughs> I don't know. They announce who's going to do right, it, right, basically. right. And in '34, it was Lawrence Grant, Lawrence Grant star Grant. of Thunder Frankenstein. Well, I mean, it was '34, <laughs> so, so it would have been uh, the star of Count of Monte Cristo, Bulldog Drummond, and the Cat Creeps. Speak easily, Cat Creeps, Mask and of Fu Manchu. It's <laughs> Mask. By candlelight. I mean, I left yeah. out a lot of them. No, these I don't. are these are the more interesting titles. All right. Yeah. So apparently, Henry on his deathbed. Uh, it has to be Henry. There's yeah. no other way around this. You know, or Heinrich von Frankenstein. <laughs> Henry, aka Heinrich von. Uh, we'll get there. He, he asked on his deathbed uh, that the Burgermeister deliver these papers to his son. It's a wooden box of papers. Yep. And in the town that we're in, the <laughs> government officials are required <laughs> to fulfill requests made on your deathbed. Bed. Evidently, that's I the mean, only that carries a lot of weight. Or is it, it considered okay that the burgomaster was friends with Henry? Like, is yeah. this an old friend? Is this Victor? Is this what I'm getting at? Is this? Oh, is this Victor? Bowles, come back. Well, actually, you don't know the burgomaster. His name's burgomaster. He's burgomaster Bowles. Could be. It could be <laughs> burgomaster. Whatever. Moritz. Moritz. Uh, there we go. Her Moritz. Yeah. Burgomaster. That'd be great. She come in, came in. Burgomaster Moritz. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, that works. So that's what it is. We're gonna. That's now the new canon. Yeah. Uh, the. There's Igor th- is the guy they cut down from the gallows, and this is Henry. This is, this is Victor. This is Victor. Sorry, not Henry. I, but <laughs> in my defense, those names were swapped were, from the novel, right. and everybody does, knows I'm a does. big fan of the novel. Well, you are now, yeah. Finally. Actually, I, finally. I did, I did, yeah, did finally read the novel. You said it was great. I love it. Yeah. Absolutely love it. Yeah. Absolutely love it. Amazing my... to me that uh, a child wrote that Essentially, novel. Essentially. When I was great. 16, I was drawing, you know, cartoons with boobs. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so was I, but they were still, those are still about as good as Frankenstein, the ones <laughs> yeah, I wrote anyway. I, I can't the, speak for yours. Depends on the boobs. It depends on the boobs. 
<laughs> no, actually, when I was 16, we were like remaking uh, Abbott and Costello Meet Frankenstein. That I was, was talking great. to somebody about this the other day. Uh, my friend Sean uh, mentioned the movie Hardware Wars, and he was like, you guys know what that is. And I'm like, I made Hardware Wars 2 in 1982. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, when I was 12, I was making Hardware yeah. Wars. But uh, enough about yes, me. Yes, he's going to deliver it, hit these papers to the son of Frankenstein, at which point... A gentleman. A gentleman leaps to his feet and says, haven't we heard that name Does he leap enough? to his feet? I don't know. Oh. Figuratively, anyway, but, he leaps. I do have the line here even haven't we had enough of that name here it's yeah. an interesting it's interesting to think about uh, the first line of this character it's probably significant that he feels that way you know what I mean that's yeah. what he's come to this he everybody had to go to this meeting and that's what he has to say <laughs> haven't we had enough of that name here he's anti Frankenstein this guy well you know then maybe don't name your town after it all right well we'll get there okay. we won't get there that's my theory is that we'll figure out a way to get around this got to be a way around this. I think I can do it. There is no way around it. I don't think I can do it. And this gentleman is Inspector Krog. Inspector Krog. No, don't give me to Krog. Don't give me to Krog. Uh, Lionel (laughs) Pinky Atwell. (laughs) Yep. I I, honestly, I knew this, but I I haven't heard it in a long time. His name really was Pinky. Pinky, His nickname was Pinky because he had, I guess, a Reddit. Not to be confused with uh, Lionel Stinky (laughs) Belmore. Oh, there we go. Let's go on there and add that to the IMDb. And I'm right, sure yeah. they won't question it. They won't question Michael it. They won't question it. <laughs> Because apparently you can post anything you want there. Yeah. And, uh, nobody checks. Oh, is that why I'm Bill Stinky? Oh, no. <laughs> it's not. No, it's a done deal. Oh, uh, there we go. I know what I'm doing as right. soon as I get to my sister in law's. Yep. I record. Uh, born March 1st, 1885 in London, England. Died April 22nd, day before my birthday, 1946, in Pacific Palisades. You were born in 1946? I know. I, I don't look as old. Holy I look cow. Young. You're doing, yeah, you look, I look great. young for my age. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, given the, what I thought was your age, I thought it was Somebody, like shit. Yeah, but now, now, <laughs> man, yeah, no. well, I, I take it all back completely. <laughs> uh, he at one point was married to the former Mrs. General MacArthur. Oh, really? Yeah, one of, yeah. Huh? That's not not at neat. this point. I think they were already divorced. But yeah, at one point. I don't know. That's neat. Wow. Seventy-seven credits. So here's you know some MacArthur of, was more or less the king of Japan after World War Two. Yeah, yeah, more or less. Like, he was appointed to just do anything he wanted yeah, for yeah, years. Yeah. And look what we got out of it. Godzilla. A great, amazing film industry. Yeah. Kira Kurosawa and... Shiro Honda. Shiro Honda. Actually, I'm looking them. for a new car. I'm going to get the, uh, the Honda <laughs> the Ishiro. Ishiro. Nope. I've been sitting on that one for a long right, time. I guess. <laughs> yeah. you know, I really wish I would have sat on it longer. Yeah, man. <laughs> continue to sit on that one. 77 films, so here's someone under 99 credits. And it's only because he died young. He died at the age of 61. In, uh, in disgrace. In disgrace, more or less, yeah. Started 1918 through 1946. Uh, some of the highlights. Why did they call him Pinky? Because he had a little reddish cast to his hair, apparently. Oh. Which, it's hard to tell in even in the technicolor. You just went and saw him in color. I was going to say, yeah. Even, we went to the uh, restored uh, Mystery of the Wax Museum. I didn't go. I skipped one. You should have gone. It looked gorgeous. It really? was uh, Scott McQueen did the uh, his gentleman who we re- have referred to frequently mm-hmm. in the past, head of the UCLA Restoration Department. He did a fantastic job with this. It looks, compared to what it used to look like, Yeah. because it was a film that was compared lost. Compared to what I have probably what seen. What you've seen, yeah. A film that was lost for a long time. They finally yeah. found a print of it in like Jack Warner's closet okay. almost literally and yeah it was faded scratched beat up looked terrible well this looks I mean, it's lustrous I think it's I've still seen the, the um, it's still the two the strip, restoration YouTube video yeah or the side by side yeah it's still the two strip Technicolor right. so you're not going to see a blue hue anywhere right but taking that into account the lighting was designed for that so you know like Fay Ray is just luminous in yeah. Technicolor so starting with Dr. X which is the other all I can think about now is that that appearance at the oscars like when she was 99 years old yeah who was it that went out to talk to her the host went out into the audience to talk to her and it's like oh yeah she just looks baffled there's no idea what's going on because it was never said that this was going to happen so yeah yeah Yeah. that's not good uh dr x was like his first villainous sort of role okay which is the precursor to uh mystery of the wax museum they're not related but they are you know the stories are somewhat similar very similar cast yeah you've got yeah 
Yeah, Lionel Atwill, Fay Ray. And another film with Lionel Atwill and Fay Ray, The Vampire Bat, we which also keeps has coming up. Lionel Bell. It's going to keep coming up. Is that Lionel Belmore and Dwight Fry is in it? You got all the Lionels. You got all the Lionels. Lionel Twain is in Lionel that one. Lionel Twain. <laughs> I don't know. It's You're just it. cutting me out of these, right? I hope. Uh, well, if, if I leave the uh, <laughs> Honda Ishiro joke in, I'm going to leave you. <laughs> all right, that's fair. Uh, Murders in the Zoo, which if you haven't seen, you should. It's uh, Paramount, but it is uh, one of those pre-code. The first okay. scene, I'm not giving anything away. The first scene, you see a vivid close-up of a man whose mouth has been sewn shut. Hmm. Actually, I think it's the most shocking moment in the entire film film full of shocking moments wow check it out i have far. not seen it uh secrets of the blue room it's another nice little that nifty, one i have over here nice. yeah nifty little universal uh one more river for james whale uh, the man who reclaimed his head pops up again and again it's not a good movie okay uh mark of the vampire he plays mark <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man, you were driving here this morning, and you were like, this is going to be fucking Phil. He's going to love this. It was be so no, great. I knew it was bad. Mark Vampire <laughs> went over exactly as you'd expect. Yes. Yep, pretty much. <laughs> nice. Captain Blood, uh, The Road Back for James Whale. Peace. The Great Garrick for James Whale. Yep. Three Musketeers with the Ritz Brothers. So uh, Dino should not show that to his daughter. Okay. Uh, Hound of the Baskervilles. Of oh, course. sure, of course. Yeah. Uh, man-made monster. Well, wait a minute. No, I say of course. He's yeah, not, he's, he's not. He's uh, not Moriarty, Moriarty but no. he's in it. Yeah. Uh, man-made monster, which was sort of the film that made Lon Chaney into a horror star. Lon Junior. To be I'm or just not. Trying to think of Lionel Atwell, and now I remembered he's in a scene like this one. Actually, he's in a courtroom scene. Yeah. Pretty uh, much. For Hound of the yeah, Basketball. Yeah, yeah, pretty anyways. much. To be or not to be, the original. Sure, with, uh, with uh, Jack Benny. Jack Benny. And, and absolutely a must-see yeah. if you have it. And That's one of those movies that I, I showed to Jackie, and it just what it didn't play at all. Really? And you never know what's going to play. Like, you and I and, yeah. and her went to Old Dark House. And and she, she, was, she, like, leapt to her, out her feet. Of her feet. Yeah. She was so loving it. <laughs> but but then it just some, some some Strange Love was another one. Just really? fell flat. Really? You never know. Hmm. Do not watch the Mel Brooks remake. Uh, Mad Doctor. Market Street, Ghost of Frankenstein, The Strange Case of Dr. Rx. I, I like him in uh, Ghost of Frankenstein as well. Yeah, he's good in that. He, he, he's really good in that. I think that we're going to talk about that a, a fair amount. That'll, that there are whole scenes that go by that he's not really the focus of it. But, still, but if you watch him, it's better. You're him, yeah. yeah. Pardon My Sarong for Abbott and Costello. Night Monster. Uh, he plays Dr. Red Herring in that. Sherlock Holmes and the Secret Weapon, where he does play Moriarty. Naturally. Uh, Frankenstein meets the Wolfman. Well, basically every Frankenstein film after this one. Yeah, we're going to talk about this guy this a lot. This guy's going to pop up a lot. And we're not never going to complain. No, no. He's uh, a highlight. Uh, at Will is well, hell, he's a huge part of this movie. Oh, yeah. Basically, he's, he's, uh, he and Lugosi when are, people like, talk highlights. about I don't know if you've heard this, but some people have the theory that this film could be shorter. And I just think uh, this film has all kinds of great Lionel Atwill and Bella Lugosi moments in it. So so we'll talk about Ooh, that as, be, over the next year and a half. You still keep those and still be a shorter film. Yeah. Then, of course, yeah, House of Frankenstein and House of Dracula. He's known for his wild sex party slash orgies. I I'm having a hard time with House of Dracula. Why? He's Why can't that. I picture him in that? What is he in that? Oh, he's like the police officer. Yeah, he's like the... He's the Burgermeister. Yeah, he's Inspector Krog. Krog. And, okay. Yeah. All right. The no, party plays well. in all of these. He's either the mayor or... Well, yeah. That's a little different. Sometimes he's the mayor. He introduces Frankenstein to the Wolfman. He does. Frankenstein? <laughs> Frankenstein? Wolfman. 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 Frankenstein. <laughs> Um, <laughs> as I was saying before, and I was remember so rudely, that joke in 2024. Rudely interrupted here. Oh, uh, no, you were wild sex parties and orgies. He served five years probation. Well, he didn't serve all of it for uh, perjury in a rape trial in 1943. Yeah, which essentially blackballed him pretty much yeah. everywhere except Universal. Okay, you know, that was the one studio. That's that nasty would, business. So yeah, I don't know why you had to bring that up. You really brought the whole thing. Uh, well, luckily it's over. <laughs> That's all I got. Okay, we'll, we'll talk about Goose Pinky. Bob and Cipher Tits next. Yes. Week. Oh, this is gonna be a good <laughs> That's one. It's gonna be a fun one. <laughs> Uh, yeah, the gentleman you see at the very, very end of the movie is not Max Shrek. Did not play Nosferatu. Well, wait a minute. Despite I'm, uh, all appearances to the contrary. All right. Well, we'll talk about him next. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Next, next week we got. He starts to say something, but he's he's featured well, much more so next. Week. I'll tell you what he says in this one. He says uh, that we live in the black. Yeah. And you kind of wonder if maybe he's trying to say something about what part of town they live in <laughs> that might be unpleasant <laughs> yeah. for some people yeah, to explore. It's yeah. a topic that I'm not. Right, I'm not saying right. uh, anyway. 
because of these Frankensteins is one of the things that uh, gets said in this one. It's because of these Frankensteins, which I love. It's like um, <laughs> one of them Frankensteins. Frederick Kerr seemed pretty popular. Yeah. Elizabeth, I assume she became Elizabeth Frankenstein. Well, but she did in about halfway through Bride. Oh, yeah, yeah. good point. But well, we don't know her if she changed her name, but I guess we assume so. <laughs> we don't know what her name was prior to that. <laughs> well, that's true. Uh, I mean, the and novel... we don't know if he was her. she was his cousin. Right. So I don't know what he means by these Frankensteins. These Frankensteins. Have nothing than, but trouble with these Frankensteins. Other than Henry. It, maybe he's heard about Peter. <laughs> That's the only <laughs> thing I can think. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, really, I mean, Henry was a, a, seemed to be a well-liked guy despite everybody knowing what he did. Yes, uh, the whole time. Yeah. Well, when you say everybody knowing what he did, uh, that's the only way out of it is to assume that not everybody knew what he did, but basically everybody knew what John he did. John Carradine and Frank Terry knew what he did. Then yeah. If those two clowns knew, that's everybody, a really good point. everybody knows. I was going to say Minnie knew, but she lived there. She might yeah. as well have been in on it at that point. She's probably considered an accomplice. Yeah. She, when it all comes to trial, the class action suit, she's going to be... <laughs> yeah, she's not... <laughs> she's at best an unindicted co-conspirator. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you knew that phrase was going to come yeah, up in this court show scene. Up somewhere. So this town apparently used to be a, a, a tourist destination. Yeah. That's the only thing I can think. It's not that people aren't like... I guess he could mean something else. He could mean people aren't opening, you know, uh, Braunschweiger stands or something. <laughs> I don't know. But it, it like, the, I guess I assume... The Shoe Plotler Festival uh, moved Shoe on. Shoe Plotler was the next thing I was going to mention. And the they, Shoe Plotler Festival. That moved to a different town after this. I wonder. I'm guessing so. It kind of looks that way. It kind of yeah. looks like, you know, when you do watch the first film and they there's the long scene, uh, the long shot of uh, Michael Mark carrying... Uh, Maria. Maria through town. It looks like a fun place to hang out like other a, than well, other than the br murder of children. Right. Well, I'll tell you, it, it still is a tourist destination because I'm going to go there... This right. year yet, if I can help it. You bring in a dummy, a, a bloodied, <laughs> drowned, <laughs> bloated, <laughs> walk through the town, <laughs> nine-year-old. I'm hoping that the tour guide lets me do that. Yeah. Just let me do this for like <laughs> ten minutes. That's all I it's have. It's a long shot. I gotta go it's all the way. Here. Just hold my phone and just follow me as <laughs> follow I follow me. <laughs> and everybody behind me just, just go. Ah! Pull, pull me as I, yeah, then I, as I pass by, then start to, yeah. Oh, look, it's Maria. Yep. Okay. That's what I got. That's it for this minute. Uh, you know what you can do is... Uh uh, <laughs> no, I don't. Tell me. Contribute. If people think this is entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> they want to support this kind of behavior. There's a way to do that. It's pretty easy. Just go to patreon.com. P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com slash Frankenstein Minute. <laughs> and for $2 a month, you can... <laughs> I'm just going to let You're you gonna go. You're going to hit stop? Uh, nope. I'm just going to let you go. For $2 a month, you can get every episode a day early, and you can listen to it uh, when Mike Herman listens uh, to it. Three in the morning. At three in the morning. Or beat them to it. You can listen yeah, to it at two o'clock in the morning yeah, central hey. time. And that's it. The music is over. We're just talking over <laughs> blank. Gonna... Jeff is going to appreciate your hitting stop. Well, he, he has to have hated the last three or four. A month. Yeah.